This video will depict the exact technique of using cyanoacrylate glue to create a temporary seal in patients with localized corneal perforations. A corneal perforation comes with its own level of challenges. Most importantly, you have the loss of globe integrity. It could result in a shallowing of the anterior chamber and iridocorneal touch. Now you may have a disorganized anterior chamber, as you can see, a secondary glaucoma, and of course, a significantly increased risk of endophthalmitis. Now, if we had at hand a method by which we could create a temporary seal, whilst we prepare for a more definitive surgery, it would certainly help us then avoid other complications which are likely to then occur. In this following video, I'd like to demonstrate the use of cyanoacrylate glue as a temporary seal for localized corneal perforations. This glue, when placed over the localized corneal defect, results in an almost instantaneous polymerization, hardening and expansion of the glue, all of which result in forming a temporary seal of the localized corneal perforation. The following video will now explain to you the method in which this can be successfully and most easily done. The surgeon needs to be extremely careful before starting the surgery. Do not forget that you're dealing with a perforated cornea. So, while preparing the operating field, that is, cleaning around the eye, as well as whilst draping and introducing the speculum, one needs to be extremely slow and cautious, and always ensuring that it's done under direct visualization. We now move to understanding the preparation of the corneal bed prior to the application of the cyanoacrylate glue. At first, we need to deepithelize some of the epithelium in the area surrounding the corneal perforation. Having done that, it is now important to try and achieve as dry a corneal surface as you can. This is demonstrated in this part of the video. You will note that it's quite difficult to achieve an absolutely dry field, clearly because you have a corneal perforation and there's the tendency of the aqueous to keep flowing out through that perforation. So you need to find just that correct moment when you're able to achieve an almost dry field prior to the application of the glue. The glue has been drawn out of the ampule and is now ready to be applied to the corneal bed. We use the back end of the Vexol sponge in order to perform this application. Now here's how it's done. The rounded end of the sponge handle is dipped into the glue, the excess glue shaken off and it is then gently applied onto and covering the corneal perforation. 
A little more glue is then taken and the edges of the glued area are further augmented as seen in this part of the video. I'd like you to note how almost instantaneously the glue polymerizes, hardens, thickens and expands. And within a matter of a couple of minutes, you've got yourself a temporary seal for this corneal perforation. At the end of the polymerization, this is what the cornea looks like. You've got the glue which is now expanded, polymerized and hardened and which provides a perfect seal to the corneal perforation. Having achieved this perfect seal, you will note how almost instantaneously the anterior chamber starts to form and hence there is no need to reform the anterior chamber with air or saline in the intraoperative period. I'd like to now share with you the post-operative images demonstrating the manner and the speed in which the anterior chamber forms in the post-operative period. This first anterior OCT image will demonstrate the formation of the anterior chamber one hour after surgery. This demonstrates an almost immediate formation and deepening of the anterior chamber. And finally, on the first post-operative day, this is what you see. A well-formed anterior chamber, a sealed corneal perforation and no extension of the corneal ulcer itself. We also don't find any reaction in the anterior chamber, proving the safety of this procedure. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thank you.